the brood 13 17 years periodical cicadas last emerged in the Chicago region in summer 2007. This part of the video will demonstrate five phases of the brood 13 cicada life cycle. The cicada life cycle begins with hatched eggs. Female cicadas make their egg nest and lay eggs on the Y-shaped twig by using the ovipositor. After six to eight weeks, cicada eggs grow into nymphs and drop underground. The instar stage begins with nymphs climbing underground through the burrow that their parents emerge from. Then, brood 13 periodical cicadas spend five juvenile stages, sucking root fluids for food, and continue to grow. Close to mid-May 2024, nymphs' emergencies occur when soil temperatures at a depth of 7 to 8 inches reach approximately 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Once cicadas emerge from the soil, they will immediately find a suitable place to mold to transform into adults. Most cicada complete the molting process overnight, and their color change gradually from green to dark brownish black. After their short tenural period, Magicicata males, including three species, begin producing species specific calling songs by using their timol. Adult cicadas spend four to six weeks in trees looking for a mate, and they feed on a wide variety of deciduous plants and shrubs. After mating, male cicadas die, and female cicadas will reproduce to keep the life cycle going. Overall, this is the completed life cycle diagram for brood 13-17 years periodical cicada. The second part of the video will demonstrate the ecology of brood 13 periodical cicada. As you can see from this ecoregion map, Brood 13 is located in between two ecoregions, Great Plains and Eastern Temperate Forest. Many years ago, Chicago was covered with natural upland forests. Periodical cicadas played the role of food resources for predators including birds, mammals, reptiles, and arthropods. Research showed that there is spatial isolation by habitat preference of three species, Cassini, Decula, and Assam. Meanwhile, they also provide nutrients to the underground, improve water filtration, and offer the home for fungi like Massosporus cicadina. There are many benefits culturally. It is a great outdoor learning opportunity for students. It provides inspiration for artists. It is also a high-protein and low-fat food resource for humans. However, periodical cicadas are facing many threats in recent years. Climate change and human interference destroy their habitats. Deforestation breaks down the balance on habitat preferences. For example, Cassini may invade upland habitats when fluid blends are disturbed. This will result in intense competition and reduced densities of individual species. The increasing temperature will impact the times that cicada emerges, landscape maintenances will interfere with many stages of the cicada life cycle. Pollution from outsides also have negative influences on cicadas. There is also a possibility that the increasing levels of urban white noise may reduce female cicada response to male courtship and overall mating success. The design portion of the project is focusing on the Peterson Avenue stretch from the Weber Spur Railroad to Rose Hill Cemetery. The three major goals for Cicada Code design are first to bring the nature upland forest back, to reconsider about zoning code to make sure all species of periodical cicadas will have equal access to their habitats. Second, to raise the public attention to our micro-level environment through different public engagement strategies. Third, generate organic and wildlife-friendly landscape maintenance guidelines to create a balance between humans and animals. 
the vehicular use areas take up a large portion of land on Peterson Avenue. The first axon is going to show the possible intervention method to turn 20% of its area into new periodical cicada habitats. Chicago's landscape ordinance had set requirements for planting on vehicular use areas. However, this will not be able to support the large numbers of periodical cicadas emerging in 2024. The new cicada code will require, first installing a 10% landscape buffer on every vehicular use area that is bigger than 2,000 square feet and require additional internal area planting when the total area exceeds 3,000 square feet. Second, all the impervious surface is required to be replaced with permeable pavers. The majority of residential areas can be good potential habitats for periodical cicadas. The second axon will demonstrate the methods on how to provide a home for them at your own house. Chicago's Municipal Code specifically pointed out the property owner's responsibility to maintain parkways and regulations for native pollinator garden development. The Cicada Code requires limited or even no maintenance activities such as moving and leaves collecting eight months before and after periodical cicada emergence. Also, residents need to report immediately after they see trees on the parkway are in an unhealthy condition. Second, residents are encouraged to develop their own cicada-friendly garden based on the original Chicago Landscape Ordinance. Recommended methods include planting deciduous trees and shrubs and developing home mushroom gardens. The community should host events and volunteer activities to assist in cicada dispersal. The abandoned railway crossing the east edge of the project can potentially turn into a perfect linear nature center. The third axon will present ways to engage with the public and enhance the connection of green spaces. Weber Spur project is aiming to create a green corridor multi-use trail. The mural on the intersection of the railway and Peterson Avenue is managed by Northeastern Illinois University. The Cicada Code is proposed to extend the development of the Weber Spur Urban Trail to create a nature walk where it prioritizes a variety of upland forest tree species and has educational signs to show the transition of cicadas life cycle. Furthermore, to enhance the collaboration with Northeastern Illinois University to advocate periodical cicada to the public through different types of art. There are many recreational areas and schools. The frequent landscape maintenance may have negative impacts on cicadas. The fourth axon will show some ideas to eliminate impact and methods to collaborate with schools. Chicago Park District Code set a series of restrictions in public parks, including prohibiting damage to the plants and rules for access to the area. Cicada Code is aiming to expand the original code to fit the periodical cicada life cycle schedule. Field use shall be avoided before and during the first week of the emergence. Varsity sports practices and games are taking place at the alternative park. Warning signs need to be implemented on site to avoid people stepping on this lawn. For landscape maintenance in public parks, all maintenance vehicles must have special turf tires. Another strategy is to replace the regular turf grass with species that require less maintenance and have slow growth rates. Chicago Public School students are required to participate in periodical cicadas theme outdoor classes. Study resources like the Cicada Tracking app should be developed. Students are able to observe and learn about the periodical cicadas by themselves. Green spaces include natural preserves, cemeteries, and parks located throughout Peterson Avenue. The fifth axon will explore the way to ensure the periodical cicadas completed life cycle based on the current site issues. Traffic noise is a big issue within Peterson Avenue. It is a very busy street, plus it is close to O'Hare International Airport, there is more airplane noise than usual. Cicada code in this section focuses on noise mitigation methods. 
the cemetery wall is replaced by the vegetated valley-shaped landform to help to redirect the majority of the sound waves, to reduce the outside interference to the periodical cicada mating process. This map indicated the existing vegetated parkway and medians on Peterson Avenue. In order to help periodical cicada successfully dispersal, the sixth axon will demonstrate the prototype of a typical cicada-friendly streetscape. One of the major goals of this project is to turn Peterson Avenue into a green corridor. However, there are many existing painted medians in the middle of the street which are not using their full capacity. Cicada code first requires planting a continuous 3 to 5 feet vegetated median throughout the Peterson Avenue. Second, starting from May to the end of June 2024, no branch trimming practices are allowed on the parkway. Third, turf grass on the parkway should be taken place by native plantings to create more habitats. Last but not the least, structural soil is required below the pavement to allow tree roots growth and cicada movement underground. The planting selection strategy here is to bring the upland forest back. All the plants listed here are deciduous, native to the Chicago region, and require low maintenance. Oak, hickory, ash, and walnut are the most common preferred host tree for periodical cicadas. The deciduous shrub selection focuses on creating an edible landscape for wildlife, and meanwhile bringing vibrant visual cues to local residents to celebrate the coexistence of humans and wildlife 